I'm tired, man. Dude, same. Oh my god. I'm so I'm so tired. That's why that's why I went and just poured myself a sod. A sod? I, I really should you know that's it's a, pop, yeah, it's a little actually. it's a little late for me, but man, I really could I could go for a little uh little coffee or something right now. Just to pop. jazz me up for this thing. Not that I'm not jazzed, but Yeah. Some pop. Just that extra jazz. You say pop one more time, I'll pop you in the mouth. Pop. Buddy. Heard. Um, yeah, welcome to the Fake Racers Podcast. <laughs> We're taking on regional dialects this time. <laughs> taking on... Oh, Only God. the important issues here on the Fake yeah. Racers Podcast. Uh, remember, folks, if you haven't already, drop a like, subscribe, follow, do all those things at Fake Racers on X, at Track and Turf on X, and on YouTube. Um, yeah. So... NASCAR was in Chicago this past weekend, and I'm doing a good job of transitioning us here through our segments to start the episode. Who needs transitions? Who needs yeah. segues? Let's get to the point. Alex, Jesus. <laughs> Alex Bowman snapped an 80 race winless streak. God damn. So I, I don't even know if that's the correct number. I think it is. Uh, I believe you that's just put it there? there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I thought that's what I remembered. All right, I'll look it up. <laughs> it sounds. That sounds. It might right, have been eighty-four. Though. It's either eighty or eighty-four. It was 80. eighty-four for Jimmy yeah. Johnson. Oh, oh, damn! Look at that. Um, too good. Um, Nerd. Alex, Geek. X Bowman won the um, street race. Snapped a big win this streak. Drank a lot of whiskey. He's probably. I think he's probably still hung over. It sounds like. Um, <laughs> probably definitely more tired than us. Shout yeah. out! Shout out to him for going hard. Um, the story was he bought it like a couple of bottles of bourbon, I think, uh, not whiskey, bourbon. But uh, yeah, bourbon. Before you, after he won his last race, and then they've just been sitting there. So it sounds like <laughs> sounds like he drank them all. So good on him. Good hot minute. Yeah, good deserved it. Um, I don't know. Deserved it, but also it was just like a typical Alex Bowman win. Well, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> where'd he come from? You like, know? Not to say he fell into it, but it did just kind of happen to him. Yeah, there, there's like a, a feeling of when a race is going weird, you're like, this is the kind of race that Alex would win, for sure. Alex Bowman doesn't <laughs> win races. Races just sort of choose him every yeah. once in a while. Well, it's like, it's, <laughs> and the guy that finished second, I think we've talked about Tyler Reddick being the same, like, this year and kind of has been similar, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Just he just kind of wins races randomly. Like there's no rhyme or reason to it. Yeah, he'll have a good car sometimes, but most of the time it's like he just fall like it falls into it. Um, <laughs> now, did, is Alex Bowman going to kill the Chicago Street Course? Is that is that? Well, Ugh. so well, so the the tough thing about that is we're on like three Alex Bowman wins in a row at tracks that we kept coming to. So we we, we might have finally broke that, yeah, because we still go to oh, Vegas. Vegas, and then what was we still go that? to Pocono, we still go to Martinsville, we still go to Richmond. Pocono doesn't have the double header anymore. Richmond's about to no, lose a true. race. All right, so it's it's TBD. So it's it's really hinging on Vegas mostly. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you know that very popular, uh, yeah. successful racetrack. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah, I, that's that's kind of the. <laughs> <gonna> write that down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do that. You do that. I write that down. That was pretty bad. It was about thirty. Or 30. Well, now I gotta leave it in. Damn yeah. it! Because <laughs> now we mentioned. <laughs> now that we mentioned, I gotta leave it in. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Making your job race, easier, though. baby. Making your job easier. Oh my goodness! What a race! It was a fantastic race. Um, so good. I man, there's a lot of folk talking about how, uh, you know, oh, the, the NASCAR's handling of the event was horrible. I, it was. Not bad. Really like, people think that. Oh yeah, dude. Okay, dude. Okay, let's let's remember dude. that we're talking about the lowest common denominator of. No, I'm talking about fan. like okay. Well, I I guess that still applies, but I'm talking like I like I still go on Reddit just to kind of like. Yeah, okay. <laughs> have think just to, like well, I mean, where are you gonna find race fans? You can go to you can go to Facebook and everyone's mad because they're in Chicago. You can go to Twitter and everyone's mad because it's Twitter. Or you can go to Reddit where everyone's mad for some other dumb reason that doesn't really apply. They just want to sound smart, and so their version of sounding smart is being. Um, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Negative about things, um, having a very like harsh outlook on everything, and, and finding like 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 feeding this sort of like negative reaction to act like they understand what they saw. And so like everyone on Reddit's like, oh, th- 
the NASCAR's handling of the race was horrible. I don't know what they were doing. They had no plan. It's like, well, they like they had rules in the rule book that they stuck to. And I don't know. I don't really know what you want. Yeah. Besides if, that, if anything, <laughs> that is the exact opposite of not having a plan. Like they exactly. specifically came up with rules for this type of situation to happen, so we didn't have last year where they just kind of were spitballing, and then at one point we're like, all right, we're just going to end it soon, guys. Like, no, we had yeah. a very defined procedure on how this race would go if if we were up against the clock. Mm-hmm. And from the start of the green flag, everyone said, okay, it's 9.20 <laughs> local, or whatever time it was local, that it was going to be as, that was going to be like the time. Okay, this is when, when this ends, then we get two laps to go, you know? And yeah. for some reason, everyone just thought that NASCAR made that up on the spot. And it's like, they forgot that that was a rule that was added, like yeah. for, because of this event last year. We talked about it on the show when they introduced it. So, yeah. I mean, first off, that's their problem. They don't watch the Fake Racers podcast, so they weren't prepared. Um, but yeah. Damn, Skippy. Honestly, thank you for bringing <laughs> that up because not enough people do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was like by. So, like, as, as an Alex Bowman fan, by the end of this race, I was just like rooting for the clock. I was like, all right, let's, let's, oh let's get this over with. I'm tired of stressing about this. <laughs> I mean, Tyler Reddick probably could have got there going into 11, I think. Um, it yeah. would have it would have been a Hail Mary move to get the pass Mary. done, but yeah. he would have just he about caught him because he was ripping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but shout out to Blake Harris, who got his first win as a crew chief. Um, oh, yeah. I was surprised by that, too. I thought he was with McDowell, at least for uh, for the Daytona 500 win, but I guess he wasn't. No, I think that was... Drew Blickensurfer was still a great Yeah, player. because cause Drew Harris has been with that 48 Blake. team for... Or Blake Harris, sorry, Blake Harris. Yeah, too many too many names. Yeah. I mix up, I've been mixing up names a lot I just want to make sure we put anyway. respect on his name, you know? Yeah, no, yeah. Blake Harris has been with that 48 crew for a long time, actually. Yeah, as well. yep. He went over to the 34 for, I think, two seasons. Right. And then, That's right. Oh, I didn't That's know right. that. Yep, okay. and then went That's back. Right. So, um, yeah, it, Thanks. Good on him. Good strategy call there to kind of, yeah. you know, Bowman was in a spot where he was looking okay on points to make the playoffs, but kind of you're like, you get that. I, I thought Ty Gibbs was going to also take the opportunity to just, okay, I'm going to stay out here on wet tires and see what happens. And that crew decided, yeah. no, we're going to try to beat Christopher Bell, who has been better than us all day by getting on the same yeah, tires was... as him. Um, yeah, not the right call. Yeah, I did kind of just want to talk about, like, that lap. So, how do, how do I want to approach this? Like, you you can look at the way Alex won this race and, and go, like, oh, X thing happened, blah, blah, blah. Um, a lot, But it, a lot of it comes down to, like, if you're going to win a race, you got to have, like, everything go right. Right? Like, you got to have... Your driver's got to be on it. You got to have the right car. Your strategy's got to be set right. Um... You know, your pit crew's got to nail it. And then you just got to get a little bit of luck on your side. And that was, like, a prime example of everything worked out where, like, they got Alex on the right strategy, things fell the right way, and it came down to where it's, like, he needs to go past Joey Hand, which was not easy. Joey Hand was ripping out front. Um, Mm -hmm. And then he had to just go. He just had to, like, build up as big of a gap as he could towards the end. And that forced... Reddick and Bell to push absolutely as hard as they were because Bowman was checking out up front and then that yeah. directly led to both of those guys either making mistakes or getting caught up and stuff which paved the way for Alex to kind of not cruise to that win but like Reddick hitting the wall in the last lap trying to chase him down that he probably doesn't make that mistake if Alex Bowman doesn't you know not or, if he gets stuck ahead. yeah right. if he de- if he gets stuck behind Joey Hand and he doesn't make that pass as quickly as he does you know, Reddick is going to catch him way earlier. Um, yeah, I mean, just such a good race. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love this race. Also, so shout much. out to our P4 finisher, Joey Hand. Um, God, he, gets yeah, a lot of love was... on, he gets a lot of love on this podcast. And when he was leading at the end, I sorry, Matt, I was I was really <laughs> rooting for Joey Hand to win that race. Yeah. That, well, that it was awesome. It was one of those things as I was watching. I was like, I, I obviously want Bowman to win this thing because it's been so long. But I was like, dude, Joey Hand doing it and Road Ringer winning this yeah. two years in a row would be the coolest shit. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's got to be anybody, Joey Hand would probably be like the only guy. Be like, OK, he beat my favorite. That's fine. That's cool. Yeah. You know. So yeah, so just this this event's so cool. Um, so much fun. Yeah, 
so fun. In the camera angles, NBC brought their A game this year. I feel, yeah. I feel like I don't know how much of it was really any different from last year, but there was like just I mean everything seemed absolutely on point. The first run that we got before the rain red flag like the anticipation and the and the, the the intensity in all the uh commentators voices they were doing the road course there the radio style broad um commentating excuse me and um like everyone was really tense because the rain was on the way and the camera angles were really good and the sound design was good and the cars were ripping down the streets of chicago and like you could just like you could just feel it like you could really really like you could it was tangible and it was just Probably some of the best sports TV I've watched in a long time was the first 20 or so laps of that race just because of, I mean, how unique and special it is. I just I can't get enough of it. And I, I know we got, we're probably going to get our third year of it and it's probably going to go somewhere else. But as long as we go to another street course, man, I, I don't care because it's, it's just too cool to not do. It has to be a street course in another big city if you move away from yeah. Chicago. Um, you have to somehow serve this market still too. Right, um, mm-hmm. so that's gonna I think gonna be where the tricky thing will be, but um, yeah, I mean looking back, year two was a uh, improvement over year one. We got a full Xfinity yep. race in, got all the concerts in, um, so and then got I think fifty five or sixty laps somewhere in there of the seventy five laps of the Cup race in. So yep, you know, definitely an improvement. Um, the favorites going into Sunday because they were the favorites on Saturday and they dominated the race Saturday. Uh, SVG and Kyle Larson. Um, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on the battle first off that they were having on Saturday because boy howdy, that was fun, <laughs> it was phenomenal. And oh, then yeah. um, both of them getting kind of caught up. Well, I guess Larson kind of did it to himself, but SVG getting caught up in an incident into six and then Larson just torpedoing into turn six, <laughs> <laughs> moving the wall back. Yeah. God, that was a hit. Yeah, that was a hit. The fact too that def- he was like, "I can drive this back." Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> he really thought he could. <laughs> it was definitely a bummer. I, I really wanted to see them battle it out on Saturday. And as cool as the rain was, I'm not gonna lie, I really want to see them battle it out on a dry track. Like, really see them like mm-hmm. push to the limits on Sunday. Um, but I'm glad we got to see a little bit of that on Saturday. Um, and they, like, you can just tell they're both students of the game. Because they were just they were just work they just turned each other over like constantly constantly turning each other over like when they were next to each other, um, and I I had a blast. It was, it was a real shame they didn't get to do it on Sunday as well. Um, Chase Briscoe is gonna rue the day. Yeah, I know it's not really his fault, but <laughs> yeah, I, I was when, yeah when we were talking about that incident, it was really funny that like everybody immediately jumped to like it was malice by chase briscoe and i was like i mean yeah, that's weird it's it's raining like like <laughs> this was gonna happen to somebody like it sucks that it happened to van gisbergen but like and it, like that was bound to happen and i mean it you know denny hamlin torpedoed ricky stenhouse like five laps later almost in the exact same manner plenty like it was people ha- torpedoed plenty yeah, of people like it happened shorted. so many times <laughs> um yeah, that that was I think the biggest bummer too was Van Gisbergen getting knocked out of that, you know, before even the end of stage two really changed the whole tide of that whole race. Um Yeah. Also a big shout out to Ross Chastain on the last lap, literally driving through the tires and <laughs> not even losing a spot. <laughs> also John Hernimacek on the last like I don't know if it was the last, the last lap or the laps, coming yeah, to the just... it was coming to the white. He got spun out, and like, there's a screenshot of him. He's in the air, like rear tires oh, yeah. up in the air. <laughs> like, <laughs> only John Hunter Nemechek could manage that. Yeah. Like, it's just unbelievable. He was running top ten throughout this race, and I think he finished in the thirties. Yeah, <laughs> I saw an onboard of his last two laps, and I can see why because he spun out like four times. Yeah. <laughs> John Hunter, listen, if if he knows one thing, it's to always go at 130 percent let me tell you he certainly does that also um, just big shout out to like half of stewart haas racing specifically josh barry i guess just josh having barry. a con like josh was doing okay and then he got into the tires once and then it all just went downhill from there and it it was so bad at the back half of this race uh yeah <laughs> Poor Josh yeah. Berry, man. He he stuffed it a couple times. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, yeah. man. So Speaking um, on Saturday, though, Saturday was a really great race, too, hmm. by the way. Um, I was really excited to see a full Xfinity race there, and they put on a hell of a show, because oh why wouldn't gosh. they? Yeah. Such a good race. Any final thoughts about NASCAR in Chicago? Keep it there if you can. If you can't, yeah, you got to bring the street course somewhere else because it's too cool. It, it sounds like the, I mean, it looks like that the mayor of the city last year was, because there, there was a new mayor before the race that didn't sign the deal with NASCAR for the race mm-hmm. last year, and he was very openly opposed to it last year. And then it seems like this year he's come around to it. Don't know how much politicking that is or whatnot, but um, it also sounds right. like it brought in a lot of business to the area, which, of course, is always good. Um, mm-hmm. And I believe NASCAR did it. I think it took them six less days of setup, which is a big help to the local um, community. Of course, there's going to be folks and stuff that are like, don't shut down my park for NASCAR. <laughs> but um, I was going to say the mayor is there in a custom made fire suit. So I think yeah. he was pretty so, enthusiastic. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So yeah. that's always good to see. Um, and I think overall, the locals, from what I've heard, have, were very supportive of it after year yep. two so hopefully we at least get to year three um because yeah. yeah this event's too cool to take off the schedule right now speaking of cool, and oh, sorry we didn't speak on it we, sorry 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 oh hey we weren't we're not doing segues this week remember um and <laughs> and also like and, uh, <laughs> just go <laughs> sorry sorry i have to write it down because it was funny um it, also, another thing that we didn't—I don't know if we touched on it last week or or not. Um, the end. If you didn't, if you looked at the entry list and you didn't see uh, all the sponsors things filled out for all of the teams heading into Chicago, um, that's another reason why it's a big deal because companies care about it, and getting a company to care about it enough to sponsor like the '66 car is a big deal. So, <laughs> I believe it was uh, NBC sent the ratings out like yesterday to to be like oh mm-hmm. look at guys i think it almost got to four million um viewers which is awesome i think it's one of the highest viewed races that they've ever had it was the most yeah. viewed xfinity race um since 2015 homestead that's that awesome. is wild <laughs> so um again that was a championship race too by the way so yep. again positive things and again everyone did a good job of making the event feel very big and very important which is again highlight they can do good things, folks. Um, speaking of good things, IndyCar deployed their hybrid for the first time at Mid-Ohio. This was the precursor uh, to the cup race on NBC. Paddle Award won. I don't know how much you guys paid attention. I know I was watching because it was hybrid and different drive system and all that. Race was boring. Okay, listen, man. <laughs> Alex Plo is really good. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what to tell you. He, the this end was boring. The end Sorry. was good. The end was good. The end was good. It's fair. Pelo I'll give you that. The end was good. Chase down Pato, but you know, not having enough the time or enough track um, to pass. I don't know if I like <laughs> the fact that they have the hybrid system plus push to pass. Don't know how I feel about that just yet. Um, yeah. So, you, you guys both understand how the hybrid know. system in IndyCar works, right? vaguely but uh i think you explain explain it, it for the content. people at home yeah Joe. oh i got gotcha. you so it's a regenerative system uh coasting brakes regenerates the battery charge and then the drivers are allowed to deploy the charge at any time they want whatever they regen they can recoup and reuse uh, whereas they still have the traditional push to pass system which gives you a bump in horsepower whatever that number is doesn't really matter it's just a bump in horsepower that's all you really need to know um so you kind of got two little bumps that you can get into um nbc also just wanted to say did a really good job of being able to track what drivers were in regen and what drivers were deploying the hybrid so that was yeah cool. i liked the graphics That's package cool. that was nice um i forgot i think these cars made over 1100 horsepower with the hybrid system too don't oh, know wow. if that's how accurate that is but i know they're making more than what they were she didn't put on a better race well it was mid-ohio yeah, it certainly was mid. <laughs> so, um, but, I don't blame Mindy. That, that track does not put on good um, sport, open wheel car a, races. It's a sports car track. Sports yeah. and stock cars. So yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, I was I was vaguely following along, um, but yeah, like I kind of lost interest. Um, <laughs> but 
good final, like Davey said, good final sprint to the finish. But up yeah. until then, not really much a hap- much happened. So, yeah. And just to agree with you guys on the boring part, I did fall asleep during that race. Um, <laughs> uh. Let's go ahead and go from the shop. On the button. NASCAR unveiled their EV prototype with um, ABB Robotics as a sponsor. Um, boy, howdy. What a terrible response by the um, uneducated race fan. I'd by like the to... worst people you know. Yeah. Um, well, NASCAR's one... gone woke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we uh, politicized electric vehicles because yeah. you know, that was the one thing I was really missing from them. Um, point being, <laughs> point being, these cars are really, really cool, and they're really, really fast, and their zero to sixty is insane. They were. The launch video that Bob Pockers posted was bonkers. So while I understand people being, um, it doesn't blow my eardrums out. This sucks. Yeah, that. Um, and also just wondering what the raceability of these cars is. Uh, it's there. It's not going to be a traditional. It's not coming to the Cup Series anytime soon. I think people are losing the fact that the next gen platform has a hybrid system built into it, mm-hmm. where in the future it can be implemented. Um, it's not right now, but because that's something that's important to OEMs. Uh, Kevin Harvick made a really good point on his podcast that released this week. His first of like three episodes they release a week because they don't have Race Hub anymore on Fox. Um, and uh, that was a good one. Thank you. He said that the <laughs> it was funny. the manufacturers probably invested a lot of time and money into this, then probably decided against it because th- remember there were the rumblings of like each manufacturer having three electric cars, and there'd be like exhibition races throughout the year that they'd run before the cup races, and blah 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 blah. And then th- that just never happened. Where NASCAR already had stuff, so they went out and found a partner to help them with it. Um, there's mm. rumblings about NASCAR maybe partnering with Nitro Cross. Um, which, is, which was sort of leaked ish by Dana White. Yeah. Yeah. However long ago. So there's ways that this concept's going to get out there. It's like an S, it's a CUV electric vehicle, too, which I think is mm-hmm. another important thing to talk about, especially when you're talking about American OEMs right now that don't have uh, standard sedan vehicles that they produce anymore. So, you know, just, uh, I don't know. I, Whack. You guys are cool, so I, I think you guys probably like the EV prototype for what it was, but, you know, if you got any thoughts on it, that's kind of my spiel. No, I agree with everything you said, um, yeah. and I'm not saying anything else. I'm just kidding. Uh, I think, I mean, it's, number one, it's cool and it's fast, and who cares that it's not, like, immediately racing? Like, we have a, we have a, we have a, how, how, how do I say this, Joe? A colleague that was like, Oh, it's just a, it was just unveiling a car that doesn't move. It's like, well, like number one, that's wrong, and number two, like, who there doesn't need to be a point to unveil it. It's something that's that's been worked on. And wait, who said there's that? There's this. Um, he doesn't listen. To, Colby did. Oh. Yeah, you can expect kind of where the rest of his thought well, you said process colleague. was. Colleague. Um, yeah, I didn't want to say friend. Acquaintance <laughs> would have been acquaintance would have been a better word. That's too much for me. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't say that either. Person I know, and you also know. <laughs> but like, I like why? What's the point of being so negative about it? Like, what's the point of like having such a horrible outlook on it? Like, it's number one, it's badass because it rips, and number two, it's not replacing the Cup car. It's not replacing any series in the top three series in NASCAR, and it's like nascar working on this is a big deal and and having even though that car maybe specifically won't be used for anything in particular the fact that it nascar is involved with the building of it is a cool it's 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 cool in that there's now we kind of see the picture we kind of see like the intent you know with with the nitro cross thing right like like there's now intent there like nascar showed intent because they brought this car to the track and they demonstrated it in front of a bunch of people and it hauled butt you know anyway I, a little I, sh- my spiel is less scientific but i was gonna say i don't get the argument of like well this specific car is not gonna run and it's like i mean like the the next gen prototype that 
what is it? Is the University of Alabama has now as a show car? <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Like exactly. It, that's how prototypes work. <laughs> yeah, Thank that's you, the Matt. whole point. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the thing's you, sick. You, you um, just described my whole job in a sentence there, too. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i hadn't seen that video that uh bob pockers had posted up until now and I, I, ju- I looked it up rips. while yeah that th- from a standstill the thing just uh pardon my french fucks off so yeah. <laughs> again anyone out there if you have never driven an all-electric vehicle first off just go do it just dealerships have too many of these things lying around just go in for a test drive because yeah they don't have anything better to do and oh, um man. yeah it's I don't know if it's the way of the future, but it's it's a way. Got three got three speeds, man. Here they're gone. I'll tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of a Top Gear quote where Jeremy Clarkson, I can't remember what car he's testing, but he's like, you put your right foot down and you're immediately somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Roddy, man. it was announced today that Rodden Childers is leaving, or I guess he's not leaving because the team shut down, um, but is going to crew chief Corey LaJoy in the seven team for Spire next year. Um, how unrealistic are the expectations going to be on the seven team? And do we like the move in terms of Spire continuing to try to become a contender? I think Rodney Childers pedigree alone will kind of shield him from expectations. But I do think if Corey LaJoy is still in that car next year, which he will be, um, it, it's basically how how we how I've been speaking about the twenty one car, um, that becomes the seven car, because now you have to go. Now you have the guy. You have the tools. It's time to build the damn thing. <laughs> Zach and Pennies isn't gonna do it anymore. You know, it's time to go with Ronnie Childers as your crew chief. It's time to it's time to go. You have how, to win a race. How many pennies do you think he stacked? They stacked in front of Ronnie Childers. This is how Ronnie Childers is going to take every goddamn one of those pennies and smack them off the table and say, we have to win. Yeah. Ronnie Childers is too good. And the expectations for Corey will be high, but they won't be unrealistic because Ronnie Childers is that guy. Yeah. This, uh, it just reminded me of, like earlier, I think it was in our like season preview where we talked about how like front row motorsports and spire are both making these huge pushes to to jump up the field and like Mm -hmm. with front row it's happened todd gillen's been killing it the last like two months or whatever yeah Yeah. no finish Um, of worse than 17th since april yeah chase elliott broke his top 20 streak and now todd has the longest top 20 streak which is wild um but like we have really not seen it out of spire we've had you know early in the year we saw some runs by um by hosevar was strong at times but they've kind of fallen mm-hmm. off not to mention weirdness again like yeah. and there's been speed sometimes in the seven team like you know qualifying top five at coda but there it's just been nothing of note out of the seven team and like Corey, i think has regressed a little bit this year he's been making more mistakes than previously like it's weird to think back to this point a year ago and we were talking about how good the seven team had been and how they were punching above their weight and now it's like they just signed maybe the best crew chief available in the garage and were, you know, not entirely excited about it. So I think that says a lot about how it's been. Um, Yeah. Like you said, like at what point does this potential finally turn into something? And I think next year is like a do or die for them. Yeah. It's been borderline do or die every year up until now, but now that they like don't have a, they don't have an excuse anymore. Now that they have, probably one of the best crew chiefs in the cup series is it is absolutely that time yeah <clears throat> so big shrug Corey doesn't have a bad crew chief right now either um so also true just throwing that out there but, ryan sparks is good at his job <laughs> <laughs> so. also true but it's rodney childers oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, a little different i can win a cup race with ronnie childers I mean, yeah, he om- he he won a cup race with Brian Vickers. He almost won multiple cup races <laughs> with with Scott Riggs. Like, dude gets it done. So yeah, he's got it. Rumor mill today for our F one fans out there. Um, Toyota is trying to return to F one with Haas. 
comments or um, thoughts on this breaking development that I think happened in the last like five hours. It did. It's just a sponsorship deal, I think. So to start, it's pretty cool. To start, very true, very true. It who, is just a sponsorship deal, just to start. Who makes their engines right now? Are they Ferrari. still? For, yeah. I I feel like if they were to get back in, like they would be as an engine provider because I don't. Because, like, Haas is, is very tight with Ferrari. They've always been tight with Ferrari. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, Ferrari doesn't like to share. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, a prime example, if you've... Uh, not to take it back to Top Gear again, um, but if you've ever seen the famous episode where they, air quotes here, reveal the Stig's identity and it's Michael Schumacher, Yeah. the whole reason they did that was because they were testing the Ferrari FXX and Ferrari would not let anybody other than Michael Schumacher do a hot lap in it. And so <laughs> they did an entire storyline that it's like, oh, he's been the stake this whole time. So, like, I, I can't see Ferrari being okay with providing them engines and then slapping a big Toyota logo on the side of the car. <laughs> so, yeah, that I, would, yeah, I would be very interesting. I would be intrigued if that were to happen. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really think about that with Ferrari. I mean, I didn't read that article. To be fair, I just well, I just saw it. I had a little bit. Of, put it out yeah. There. Well, yeah. Same. And then I kind of had some discourse with um, friend of the show Darren, who watches a lot of Formula One and you know is generally pretty knowledgeable about the subject, um, at least in its current form. And that was kind of what we came to was you know, it's a sponsorship deal. It was with Haas. And it's a little weird. And I don't know how... Now that you bring that up, Matthew, I don't really... I don't see how Ferrari ends up okay with it, but... Toyota, yeah. Ferrari, Haas would be really weird and pretty cool, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Taking it back to 2010 when there was a BMW Sauber Ferrari. That was always fun. That's nuts. That's <laughs> nuts. I forgot about that, too. <laughs> So, um, I, was, I was just reading it though while you're going on that and it says that Toyota seems to be interested in building like the chassis and the components of it oh which, so I guess we'll see um, if, if they could do a good job for I'll probably be okay with it yeah. <laughs> they like winning so, um, also a uh, great thing about the timing of the show that we we always make jokes about how like the big news always comes out the day after we record. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know what you're. Saying. Yeah. And so we've shifted it back a day for like While the latter can. part of this year. Yeah. And then <laughs> now we have Front Row Motorsports announcing today that they have a driver announcement tomorrow. So, <laughs> dude, that is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Gregson, walk on down. Yeah. Yeah. The Black Rifle Coffee Car. So did, is that... So that's only two drivers now, right? They don't yep. have a third driver yet. Yeah, so there's some rumblings that Zane Smith might go back um, now. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. But... Um, that would be funny. I don't know, because... Who else is without a ride right now in Cup? Um, Zane. Zane doesn't have a Ryan ride. Priest. Ryan Priest, Harrison Burton. Uh, yeah. Ryan Priest, Harrison Burton. Oh, it? I didn't think about Harrison Burton. Yeah. Truex is retiring. <laughs> I, th th I think that's it. Truex is gone. Stenhouse is re signed. Uh, Parker Retzlaff. He's ran some cup races. A cup race. He's <laughs> not a cup driver, though. <laughs> Damn. You Could sure? Be, not yet. I was going to say Riley Herbst doesn't have a ride more than likely next year. Oh, yeah. That's Could a be him. good shout. Yeah. That's actually a pro pretty solid shout, actually. I can't wait for three Monster Energy cars on track at once. It's going to be great. I, I certainly can <laughs> wait for that. <laughs> they need to sponsor a Chevy team, so we just have, like, all different manufacturers. I think that would be really funny. If they, like, shock us tomorrow. if they, uh, Okay, how about this? If they, like, absolutely shock us tomorrow. If it's, like, a driver that none of us even had on the radar. Like, if it's just out of left field, we have to do, it. We have to do like, a, an emergency show for it. I'd be down for that. <laughs> okay. Because I'm so confident that it's going to be Noah Gragson. I just... I'll, I'll put up my time for a possible breaking news story, you know? Yeah. What, is, what on earth is Joe's like, I America? am not doing that. I got Bomb Squad, so uh, tomorrow's <laughs> Wednesday. Got tomorrow. 
I got I got work stuff tomorrow. <laughs> well, either way. Either yeah, way. We'll figure it out. Um, bottom split moment of the week, Davey. Bottom split moment of the week. Uh, let's see. I always got to... I always got to go through some stuff to figure it out. Um, <laughs> bottom split moment of the week. I, uh, you know, there has been, there was, there was no league racing last week and I, I, I kind of missed sim racing and that was pretty, pretty bad. What are you winking at? Hmm? Do I have a bottom, do, you, do I have a bottom split moment that I don't know about? No. no, no. Did you, did you do something to me, Joe? Nope. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what's I don't your like bottom that at all. I'm scared. Matt, oh. Split of the week? Uh, so my bottom split moment of the week uh, is one that I'm like genuinely upset about. Um, yeah, so it's know. NFL media or NFL Network. Um, mm. So I, for the last five years, I have been an avid listener of Around the NFL, which has been a huge podcast hit for them, and. Uh, just to know like how impactful this show has been on NFL media, the podcast studio at NFL Network is called the Chris Wessling Podcast Studio, and it's named after Chris Wessling, who, uh, may he rest in peace, passed away a couple years ago after his second fight with cancer, and he was one of the members of that show. Um, and like I mentioned, showed us huge numbers, it's critically acclaimed, they get nominated every single year for everything, and then six weeks ago, uh, episodes just stopped coming out of nowhere. And hmm. after a month and a half of complete silence, uh, Greg Rosenthal, the only one of the three guys apparently still with the company, announced that he was like, yeah, uh, don't know what happened. We just got canceled out of the blue. And so, and like they released, or he released the first episode of a new show with like two of their frequent guests and like the whole first 20 minutes as he's like basically like pouring his heart out like, yeah, man, I mean, these people feel like my family, and uh, then all one day it was just taken away from us, and uh, I hope you keep supporting us, because I don't know. So, uh, big shout out to NFL Media for canceling one of the best goddamn sports shows out there, and laying off two people. Shout that out to awesome, just so. all of the sports media right now insisting on having talking head debate shows 24-7 <sighs> if they're not showing live sports, instead of actual reporting, which is what we want. Again, I know... Oh, you can just get that info from, from social media. Blah 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 blah. Sports Center was cool when there were actual highlights on it. It's not cool yeah. anymore. Um, Listen, man, people want to channel surf again. It's coming back around. It is. Put some put some good put yeah. some good TV shows back on. You know what I'm Great saying? timing for Cartoon Network to shut down. So. <laughs> Great timing. Just I, I can't wait for them to bundle all these streaming services together and make cable 2.0. It's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like that was the biggest thing about around the NFL is it wasn't a talking head show. It wasn't like obnoxious like Pat McAfee. It was just like three dudes who are just like football fans and are like family to each other. And it's like original Top Gear. It's the third time I brought it up this episode where like the biggest selling point is the chemistry of the three guys. Right. Mm -hmm. And they killed it for money. I don't get it. So I'm pissed off. I do. Money's so. nice. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you, sh you just had a heartfelt thing, and I just dismissed it like a jackass. Yeah. Well, no, I, I know that's what it is. Yeah, and like the reason why they held on to Greg Rosenthal and not the and not Dan Anzis or Mark Sessler is because Greg does other stuff for the well, and station. His, He's and not... his name is more like I know Greg yeah. Rosenthal. I don't know the other two guys. Yeah, and that's because they only did written articles or around the NFL, and Greg's yep. an on-air personality, and that's yep. why they kept him. So that's yep. bullshit. So, um, yeah. uh, Joe, how about you? My bottom split moment. Um. Hmm. I got one, but I don't want to say it because it's kind of it's funny, but it's also like I'll say it. We were having a party Saturday night, and we were outside, <laughs> and I passed some bug spray around, and um, someone sprayed the bug spray right in their eyes, and made, <laughs> made the most <laughs> made the most uh, crazy like shriek of ow! I got bug spray in my eyes. <laughs> and um, that's the bottom split moment of the week. Cause that sucks. Getting bug spray in your eyes. Uh, well, what? He's not gonna have any bugs in his eyes. Is that what you were winking at me for? No, no, I was <laughs> winking at you for something else. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, road to pro moment. 
Um, Matt, what's your road to pro moment of the week? Uh, oh, man, there's all goes first. There's so much not to talk I'm about talking. Moto this week. Um, I'm not going to make it Jet Lawrence breaking his thumb and being out for the season, but I am going to make it for two weeks ago. My road to pro moment was Ty Masterpool, and guess what? It's Ty Masterpool again. Uh, <laughs> Man's in the first moto at Redbud. Uh, not only won his second career moto, but was the only guy on a 250 to to clear Loraco's leap. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Loraco's leap is a 120 foot long step up that they built there in the 90s, and uh, it, it's gone through some changes. But the way it's been laid out the last few years is like the 450 guys are struggling to do it, and Ty Masterpool on a four-stroke 250 just absolutely laid out wide open fourth gear, <laughs> sitting on the back fender, cleared it in the first moto, and I think he was the only oh, guy yeah. who did it. <laughs> so that insane. T- I tip my hat to you, Ty Masterpool. That was awesome. <laughs> so uh, who's next? My road to pro moment this week was. Sorry, I'm making a lot of time. <sighs> Lewis Hailing Hamilton. anticipation. Winning and breaking. Good. His hey. It's a solid one. Even though I don't like F1, because that's cool. So, yeah. How many wins is he up to now? He's in triple digits, isn't he? Too many. I'm going to look this up now. Yeah, it kind of snuck up on me that Lewis hadn't won a race in, like, what, two and a half years, I think? Something like that, yeah. That's wild. Freaking Max. Uh, 104 <laughs> wins, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. And never... Silverstone, once again, put on a great race. Yeah, that that's the coolest part of it, too, is him breaking his streak at Silverstone, yeah. Yep. All the Brits were um, cheating, though. Okay. <laughs> They were. They qualified like top four. How's that? Okay. How's that All work? right, buddy. How's All right, work? buddy. Okay. Okay, buddy. All <laughs> they right. They really did qualify one, two, three. Oh my god. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you go talk about some like Tottenham Hotspurs or I don't know, you Brit, British loving American. Davey, what's your road to pro moment this week? Thank you. Uh, speaking of British love and American, absolutely not, baby. I had a great 4th of July. It was fun. Hung out with <laughs> some Fam Jam and, and Lauren. Um, sh- uh, saw some fireworks, ate some food, went in the pool, got burnt. Things you do on 4th of July. My other secondary road to pro moment, because I'm going to go fast, is um, I don't know if you guys know or are aware of the game uh, Circuit Superstars and and karting superstars that are both on steam they're both fun uh, circuit superstars is the more popular ones like a top-down racing game with a bunch of different forms of racing in it um they just partnered with iRacing today um, oh to yeah make, and they're doing like a they have like a project that they're it's currently titled iRacing arcade um but they're gonna kind of team up and make a little arcade game and i'm really excited for it because i just recently got both those games from the steam summer sale and I've been having a blast with Karting Superstars, and it's, like, half the game that Circus Superstars is, because, like, Karting Superstars is, like, in beta still. It's, like, not done. Um, and I can't wait to play the other one, and I can't wait to see what they come up with as a team, because that's a really cool partnership. Anyway, that's my to pro moment. Uh, cool video game stuff and 4th of July stuff. Hell yeah. Well, folks, we hope you had a great long weekend, hopefully. For sure. Um, I did. It was 108 degrees the whole time, and I didn't go outside a single time. That sounds like a good weekend to me. Um, Very fair. Folks, remember, if you haven't already, drop a like, subscribe, follow, leave us a comment, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Um, We appreciate you guys listening each and every week. Again, at Fake Racers on X, at Track and Turf on X, or at Track and Turf on YouTube.com. Davey, what you got going on this week? <sighs> Realistically, Joe, nothing. Matt, what nothing. you got going on this week? Pretty much same. Uh, my local BMX tracks basically said that just don't even come to the track until we tell you it's too hot. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have in, absolutely nothing going on. <laughs> tune in Thursday night to Captain to uh, the, Captain Esports Network and JTN and JTN and JTN and JTN. To watch um, Bomb Squad, or if you want to watch iRacing, watch trucks go around the track at Bristol, which is really poor timing for our Bristol race after the worst race of the season at New Hampshire with too many yellows, but hey, what can you do? 
Um, didn't you make the schedule? Sure did, but I didn't expect us to have such a bad race at New Hampshire of all places. So. Mm. Uh, sounds like I didn't you, expect it. Sounds like a you problem. We have taken steps. We've taken measures. We should have a better race. Okay. We've told some people that hey, don't you just gotta you're just gonna back. you can come back. You can practice, but you cannot race with us wow. until we say you're ready. Finally, you know my struggle. <laughs> <laughs> So tune in for that uh, Thursday on yeah. Captain Esports. Um, does a great job, by the way. And uh, does. tune in to JTN for Bomb Squad Racing Cup Series action from Phoenix this week. Um, Do. So, yeah. All right, folks. Well. Yeah. All right, folks. Thank you, you know, for watching, right, for listening. All right, folks. Um, <laughs> make sure you're feeling all right. All right, folks. <laughs> I'm going to put that in my notes. All right, folks. All right, folks. <laughs> Oh, wait, I have the Looney Tunes sound effect. Hang on. It'll be perfect for that. <laughs> Are we going to get copyrighted for that, though? Oh! I, I'm speaking. It's not copyrighted <laughs> anymore. Okay, good. good. That's all, folks. We'll see you guys next week <laughs> here on the Fake Racers Podcast. Bye! <laughs>